What's going on guys? It's the Dark Wolf here and finally the second Assault DLC came out a few days ago and oh my god I am loving it so much and because of my love for it so much I just wanted to talk about Operation Firestorm as I seem to be enjoying it way too much. Now for those of you that don't know the second Assault DLC for Battlefield 4 is currently available for all premium members across all platforms and you will be able to buy it in a few weeks for fifteen dollars in case you don't want to get premium so it comes with four maps from Battlefield 3 just updated to Battlefield 4 standards graphics a new game mode brought from Battlefield 3 into Battlefield 4 called capture the flag which was very exciting I love that game mode a few guns and slight map design changes here and there for example the huge ass crane can now fall on Operation Firestorm due to its upgraded Frostbite engine and it actually looks pretty epic. Now to be completely honest when I heard that Operation Firestorm was going to be brought back from Battlefield 3 to Battlefield 4 through the second Assault DLC I was so disappointed and saw it as a waste of bringing a map back because I didn't really like it very much in Battlefield 3. I mean, it was an okay conquest map, but nowhere near Caspian border level. And so I was hoping for something like No Share Canals to be remade into Battlefield 4, which, by the way, was one of my favorite, or something like Zeba Tower. I love those two. But now, I think I'm actually glad that they brought back Firestorm because, like I said, I'm having so much fun on this map. It's becoming a favorite, and let me tell you why. So basically there's an assignment to unlock one of the new weapons that we're given in this DLC where you have to get 5 kills on the huge ass tower that's somewhere around the middle of the map and that weapon is the gold magnum bolt action rifle. Now let me tell you, everyone on the battlefield is trying to unlock it. And so if you're playing on a 64 man server with 32 players on each side and each one of them is trying to unlock this exclusive weapon, that's 64 players on 30 meters of space. It becomes so chaotic and hectic, it is absolutely incredible. I would say over 90% of the map is not even in use because everyone is in that small section. So we could basically say that Conquest and Operation Firestorm is like Team Deathmatch. In fact, it's probably more close quarters on Conquest mode than it is on Team Deathmatch because there's so many vehicles. Every minute or so, a jet would come crashing into the tower. There's 20 people parachuting at once. There's DMR spam everywhere. Psh, 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 psh. There's helicopters strafing and AA sitting in the back of the base, whoring kills. And same with the tank, wrecking everyone on the lower levels of the tower. It is the definition of chaos. Now all that epicness that I mentioned isn't always the case. You might find yourself in a server where there aren't as many people focused around the tower as you would assume. And so the map is balanced out in terms of player per space. So there's actually people playing the objective, you know, tanking, flying their aircraft or whatever. And that is the true beauty of this map that no matter what kind of role you like to play on the battlefield, you can do it all on this map, whether it's sniping at a distance, capturing the objective with 50 tons of pure armor, or fighting for the tower. Now what I think would make the map even more chaotic than what it really is, is if the top of the tower was a capture point. That would really mesh it up because then truly everyone will be fighting for it. Now as awesome and epic as all this sounds, Operation Firestorm has a few flaws, and here's some of them. So. The map is extremely open, which is a huge problem to many aircraft vehicle players because they have almost no cover. On a map like Siege of Shanghai or Caspian, you have buildings and trees to hide behind or to conceal yourself from enemy threats such as any lock-ons, which includes stingers, heat seekers, and things like that, or the infamous AA. The AA is extremely powerful on this map, and if there's a rank 110 sitting in that piece of junk, he is bound to be going 40-0 on the top of the scoreboard, pissing everyone off in the server. And let me try to pass on a message, please. Don't do this. Please don't camp in an anti-aircraft vehicle the whole game. I understand that it's in the game for a reason. Yes, that's right, but there's a limit. Like, come on, you're not making it fun for anyone else in the server, and that pisses off a lot of people. If you really want to get easy kills, I suggest you learn how to shoot with a gun. Get your aim properly. There's videos all around YouTube showing you how to perfect your battlefield gameplay. But that's a different topic. And get your ass on the battlefield instead of killing people 2,000 meters away in your base concealed by God knows how many tons of armor. But that's a completely different story, but please do keep that in mind the next time you decide to go into that, ah, that AA. Moving along, a second flaw that I found on this map is the fire. Ooh, the fire though. It burns you to pieces within about one second. Take a look at some of these clips. 
Awesome. Now, I understand that the map is called Firestorm, but I think DICE took it a little overboard. Every open hole in the ground or every gas pipe has a hole in it that spits burning hot lava, which does a lot of damage to you if you're somewhat close to it, and is probably one of the main sources of deaths to me on this map. Of course, only while running around as infantry. And lastly, the burnout button. Now, the burnout button at the bottom of the tower is actually good and bad. Some of you may be wondering, what's the burnout button? Well, there's a button at the bottom of the tower button at the bottom of the, there's a button at the bottom of the tower <laughs> that sounds fun saying you should give it a try that you can press and it will burn every every living creature at the top of the tower into ashes now it's good if there's a shitload of enemies on the top of the tower who are being a pain in the ass and you really want to get rid of them but it's also really bad because the bottom is spammable and what i mean by that is that you can press it wait for the top to get set on fire and press it 10 seconds later, it's ridiculous and gives no opportunity for anyone to ever be able to get kills up there. Happened to me, I think the guy got 70 Nemesis victim on me and just for pressing the button a million times in under a second, like sheesh bro, chill. How do you even find that fun, bruh? The last flaw that I could think of is the jet. So the jets in the second assault DLC spawn on the ground just like they did in BF3 instead of the air. But I'm pretty sure there is a bug because every time I want to take off, I'm holding the accelerate key, but it simply does not take off. And I end up flying my jet 3000 kilometers an hour into a rock, unable to take off. It's happened to me about 10 times already and it's starting to become very frustrating but it doesn't always happen most of the time I'm able to take off safely but sometimes I spawn in a jet that weighs probably a billion tons because it cannot take off but I'm sure that this is either me being stupid or it's a bug that will be fixed eventually but that's pretty much it for the flaws when you try to balance out the pros and the cons in terms of the map design and the overall play of Operation Firestorm in Battlefield 4 Operation Firestorm 2014 that is specifically I honestly don't like the design and the layout of most of the maps in Battlefield 4 but Operation Firestorm really gives me a chance to play all my roles how I want and is giving me a very enjoyable time. I'm loving this DLC and I would say Operation Firestorm 2014 is now in my top five maps. I would like you to please leave a comment down below telling me your favorite map or maps in Battlefield 4. Maybe even set out a top five list if you want. I'm always reading and replying to the comments, but that's it for me. I really do hope you guys enjoyed this commentary on Operation Firestorm and please be sure to leave a like as it always does help support the channel and puts a smile on my face. So if you guys want to put a smile on my face, just click that like button. Also, let me know if you want me to talk about another map, giving my honest opinion, feedback, some helpful tips and tricks and adjustment abilities in order to have a good time on that map. You can always follow me on Twitter and ask me questions there at the dark wolf but anyways that's it for me i hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day stay happy be positive keep that smile on your face but this has been the dark wolf and i guess i'll see you guys on the battlefield it's lost, so it's